Remember Paul Rossi, the brave school teacher from Grace Church School in Manhattan who spoke out against critical race theory and anti-racism dogma in his school? Well, his story continues. There's an update today. So if you recall, last week I did a video about Paul Rossi. Here he is. He is the brave teacher who spoke out rather eloquently about what's going on at Grace Church School where he works as a math teacher. He got a response from the school telling him not to come back to school. In the letter to Parents Thursday, Principal George Davison chided Rossi without naming him for exposing the exclusive school's internal operations. The process of building a community is often challenging, and I am disappointed that this individual felt it necessary to air his differences in this way, Davison wrote. Writing on commentator Barry Wise's Substack newsletter, Rossi wrote that white students are encouraged to view themselves as vehicles of oppression. The teacher claimed that gray students were pushed to form their opinions and positions based less on personal inquiry than skin color. And we read that letter last week. But Davison staunchly defended the school's approach Thursday, arguing that it had a responsibility to combat forces of bias, hate, and fear that exist in our society and that seek to diminish so many in our midst. Of course, never giving any examples of where that has happened at Grace Church, Grace Church School, which is important. If you say that this is this emergency, that this is thing you have to focus on to the point where you talk about it constantly and make the kids aware of it in every class, including math class, you better bring it. You better bring receipts. You better tell people what is happening specifically within your school because that's your purview. You can't really change the outside world. Not yet. Certainly not if these kids can't read and write and do math and think straight. That's your job first. Um, but he doesn't. Doesn't give any examples, of course. Um, Rossi said the school enforced ideological conformity and that diverge, diverging viewpoints are hurry, hurriedly confronted, condemned, and quieted. One staff administrator informed Rossi that his objections to school policy could potentially be categorized as harassment, the teacher wrote. Davidson conceded Thursday that his school has some room for improvement. Now get this. We've always held the goal of fostering an environment that is safe and welcoming to all members of the community across a myriad of differences, he wrote. This is a work in progress, and while we are not always successful as we would hope, we know that it requires the constructive engagement of everyone in the community. That would include Paul Rossi, by the way, the one you're silencing, keeping from campus, instead of perhaps maybe having an open debate. Why don't you, Mr. Davison, get up on a stage and debate Mr. Rossi and explain how he's wrong and you're right? And again, bring receipts, please. Founded in 1894, the school counts actor David Duchovny and writer David Brooks as graduates. We take our values seriously, Davison continued in his note to parents. We will respond to any criticism with a renewal of our commitment to live them out in practice and with an equal resolve to hear all points of view about how we can best do so. Does this look like resolve to hear all points of view? Remember, Paul Rossi said he had communicated his concerns he communicated them privately within one of those little affinity group sessions it was supposed to be about self-care and as soon as it got out to again within the community not to the general public just within the community what happened he was chided within the school and every every class had to read something about how you know wrong it was what he did so yeah i'm not really buying it mr davison so let's go and take a look at what happened after that, um, Rossi had a conversation with Davison, and he recorded sections of that conversation. And what I'm going to play for you now are segments of that conversation, and it's very important because Davison claims that Rossi took him out of context when he responded to him in a letter. And I'm going to read Rossi's letter back to him, but I want you to first hear the comments. I think it's really, really important. Okay. They spoke on March 2nd. So this is when, you know, he's, he, remember, Davidson just wrote the, the letter the other day. I think it was on the 13th saying, no, Rossi wrote on the 13th. And then on the 15th, Davidson said, don't bother coming back to school. And then said to the the parents that, you know, he went public and this is just not what we stand for and we are welcoming all views and all this. And, you know, our values are very important. I want you to think about what he said about values when you listen to these comments. Hold on a second. Okay, ready? Okay, so have a listen. 
I also um, have grave doubts about some of the doctrinaire stuff that gets spouted at us in the name of anti-racism. Like what? And, and, and so I, I don't disagree entirely with some of your points of view. Can you elaborate? Because it would help me. It would help me understand, like, what's going on. I think that one of the things that's going on a little too much, and we've talked about this, is that um, the demonization of being white um, and, and the attempt to link anybody who's white to the perpetuation of white supremacy. Thank you. Thank you, George. So there is no question that there is an entire strain in here that um, causes that misinterpretation. Now, I am someone. Wait, 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 wait a minute. But what about impact over intent? Don't no, those no, kids I, get the I, benefit of impact over intent? Our attempt is going to be to get everybody centered again. All right. Um, I will tell you. I mean, that's a huge task because I will tell you that we are. If you if you try to do that, um, they're they're already like the barn door is open and they're all in the barn. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna they're fighting a revolution that you you don't even know they're fighting. And well, grace, I mean, they're gonna hollow out grace and they're gonna move on to the next institution. That's what's gonna happen. Like, I I think that they've hollowed out a bunch of other ones ahead of us so yeah that's what i'm saying you're just you're just a little stone in the path this beautiful wonderful institution that's educated so many children over so over almost a century is over is, a century let me ask you that's something it. george because i think those are i think there's something very different now, about having uh, a single experience where you make sense of it, right? And having a teacher, an authority figure, talk to you endlessly every year telling you that because you have whiteness, you are associated with evils, all these different evils. These are moral evils. It's not the same as taking like a physical thing because it doesn't affect your 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 moral value. That's the problem. The 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 fact is that I'm agreeing with you that there has been a demonization that we need to get our hands around in the way in which people are doing this understanding. Okay, so you agree that you, we're demonizing kids? We're demonizing um, kid. We're, we're demonizing white people for being born. And uh, and are some of our and students white right. people? What are some of our students white people? Yes. Okay, so we're demonizing white. We're demonizing white kids. Why don't you just say it? We are, I, we are using language that makes them feel less than um, for nothing that they are personally responsible for. Okay, then. Have I not been saying that on this channel for how many months? That's what they're all doing. That's what critical race theory does. That's what anti-racism does. That's what Kendi's book is about. That's what Robin D'Angelo's book is about. That's what all of this is about. You can't get everyone centered again. You can't get your hands around it again. No, no, sir. No, Mr. Davidson. You need to completely 100% contradict everything you have been teaching these children. Let's see what Rossi says to Mr. Davidson after that. April 19th. So that was March. They had that conversation, right? They had a conversation. Davidson says, I agree with you. We're demonizing white kids. It goes all the way up until April 13th when Rossi writes his letter and Barry Weiss's substack. So from March 2nd to then, did, had anything changed? No. In fact, Rossi was demonized within his school after that conversation. Does that sound like the administrator has his back? Does that sound like he agrees with him? Does it sound like, or does it sound like he's a spineless jellyfish allowing children to be abused? All their parents pay $57,000 a year for the privilege, right? Okay, so then... After he goes public, because obviously Davidson isn't going to do anything. He's not going to have a spine to recenter, get his hands around or anything else, anything other than Paul Rossi's neck. Okay. Rossi was smart. He had those conversations recorded. Mm -hmm. But he tells him, don't come back to school. I'm so disappointed in this individual that he chose to go public. Yeah, he didn't go public, dude, until you completely ignored everything he said to you and you said back to him. 
and didn't change anything. And he waited a month. A month. He gave you to do anything, say anything, demonstrate that you agreed. Instead, you went the opposite direction. Opposite direction. Even as Dalton is falling and Brearley is falling and all of these things are falling, which in March you knew. You knew that in March. How spineless do you have to be, Mr. Davison? Uh, literally, you're an invertebrate. Anyway, here is what Rossi wrote. Dear George, I'm writing in response to the letter you sent over the weekend to my colleagues. Grace's public story, the story it is telling to the press and its own community, has been very different from what you have told me. In light of your statement that my essay contains glaring omissions and inaccuracies and in support of those who will inevitably be scared into silence by seeing the price I am now paying for speaking up, I am compelled to share what you have told me in our previous conversations. He withheld that for a month. So, Mr. Davison, you had a chance. You had a chance to do the right thing. You had an ample chance. You didn't do it. And so, yes, now you've been humiliated. But guess what? It's called karma. It's called karma. You are knowingly, knowingly demonizing white people, demonizing the students in your care. And you admitted it. And he did nothing for a month. He gave you a chance. You did nothing. In the letter, you affirm that Grace's commitment to anti-racism is consistent with our identity and mission and that it has been at the heart of your work for years. How do you sleep at night, sir? I believe that you share my desire to ensure that racism did not mar the experience of students at Grace. But like me, you also expressed grave doubts about some of the doctrinaire stuff that gets spouted at us in the name of anti-racism. That's a quote. You said it. When I told you they're fighting revolution and will hollow out Grace and move on to the next institution you acknowledge that they've hollowed out a bunch of other ones ahead of us that was in march yeah you allowed it to continue for a month you write that you find it regrettable that paul rossi chose to air his grievances with the school in the press regrettable for you i'm sure not for paul rossi but as you well know, speaking publicly about this was hardly my first choice. Over the course of several years, I've made my specific concerns clear, not only to you, but to the head of the high school and the assistant head. These concerns centered on the impact of this doctrinaire ideology on our students. Even when I've simply tried to expose our students to alternative points of view in the classroom. Remember the Glenn Lowry thing? No, not, not that kind of conservative. Not a black conservative. That We can't have that. It would just confuse these students, our extremely brilliant students who have to test at a certain level to get into the school in the first place. No, we wouldn't want to confuse these high school juniors and seniors showing them a black man who doesn't conform to, you know, the narrative. Can't have that. Uh, I have been repeatedly shut down. The school's response to my efforts to raise these concerns internally left me no choice but to speak about them publicly. In the letter, you say that the well-being of our community is our first priority and that Grace cares deeply about human dignity. Would that be the human dignity that you are demonizing in the white students? That one, that that human dignity you care so much about, you know that you're demonizing them, but you keep doing it? Mm, you care so deeply. I can see that. And yet you admitted to me that Grace Church is in fact demonizing white people for being born and that the school is making white students feel less than for nothing that they are personally responsible for. While I cannot know for certain, I suspect that the reason you have not shared these concerns with the broader grace community is because you know exactly what happens to people who do. It is what is happening to me right now. I understand that. It is because of the fear I see in so many people, including so many of our students, that I felt compelled to speak out even though I knew I would put, pay a deep price for it. I love the school and its students, and I want to see it thrive. I want to see a renewed commitment to free expression, viewpoint diversity, and true education. And I think the public, and in particular the Grace community, deserve to know that these concerns are not mine alone. Sincerely, Paul. As I said, I think that this head of school will probably go the way of the Dalton head of school very shortly, and he will find himself looking for another job, and probably it won't be in education. Not sure who's going to hire him, but I hope he was well paid and saved his pennies over the last however many years because he's going to need it. When you admit openly and you're recorded saying so that you know, you know you're demonizing white students, you're pretty much toast. And you owe Paul Rossi a giant apology. And you owe the parents of these students and the students themselves a giant apology. And you probably should make your peace with your maker because... I, again, I don't know how you sleep at night. I don't know how you look yourself in the mirror. That you could say those things, that you know this to be true, and yet, and yet, you threw Paul Rossi under the bus. And if I sound a little bit harsh to Mr. Davison, 
he took on a job. And that job was being in charge of a school full of people under the age of 18. Children. In their formative years. Their minds, their hearts, their very souls were in his care for up to 13 years. If they started in kindergarten. And this is the kind of integrity he has. Every parent should be saying thank you to Paul Rossi for exposing this. What if he hadn't spoken up? This would be continuing. This man would be continuing to take a paycheck and cash it, all while knowing full well he's allowing his students in his school to be abused. What kind of banal evil is that? It's the kind of banal evil that allowed something like Nazi Germany to happen. Mm -hmm, it is. It's people like this. Well, I know it's wrong and I know it's crazy and I know it's evil and I know it's demonizing and I know it's punishing them for something they had nothing to do with, but I'm going to continue to pretend that I am for it because I have no spine. So that's the update. Thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon.